Coco keeps her eyes closed since they have jumped from such a high place. But Baiming asks her to open her eyes, assuring her they are safe now. She is shocked that after jumping from such a height, they are still, and wonders how he did that. He teases her that she is really unaware of how capable her man is. She clenches her fist, realizing that she can't run away from him. In the car, Coco is sitting in the corner. Bei Ming smokes, his mind filled with thoughts of Coco, whom he now perceives as an irresistible addiction, unlike any he has ever experienced before. He then puts out the cigarette and orders his driver to get off and buy something for him, but realizes he won't be able to buy it in this wilderness, so instead he goes for oral. CCO hesitates, but Bei Ming is determined. After a while, Coco is laying her head on Bei Ming's lap. She recalls her phone was left in Snow's room and wonders if Zijin will be worried. Bei Ming realizes she is thinking about another man and calls her terrible in his mind. When they arrive at the mansion, the driver informs him that Zijin is here. He covers Coco with a blanket while holding her in his arms. Inside the mansion, Zijin, Fei Fei and Dadai are all present. Bei Ming inquires from Zijin if he has informed the girls. He asks if he is really going to declare war with her. He warns him to give Coco back to him. He smirks and tells him that if he doesn't mind, he can take the blanket off as well. Dadai calls him out for his behavior and tells him that he has changed and he has never been like this before. She also tells him that if he really is into her, he shouldn't be this way and reminds him that Master does not want him to have anyone important and isn't he scared that Master might hurt Coco. He pretends to not care and declares it doesn't matter because by the time Master takes action, he is going to be over her and he wouldn't care even if she's being tortured. Dadai perceives him as cruel now. Zijin intervenes, telling him that if he does not know how to cherish her, he should let him do it and he is ready to pay the debts for her. Coco is asleep. He kisses her on the cheek to wake her up and informs her that someone wants to buy her from him and why doesn't she wake up and see who that is? Coco rubs her eyes and realizes it's Zijin. Baiming reveals that he's ready to spend two billion S on her and asks her to choose between them. But Coco is aware she has fallen into an abyss. Coco now perceives Baiming as a devil and believes she cannot let Zijin fall into this mess with her. She remains silent. Baiming points out to Zijin that he has seen it himself that she does not want to go with him. So why is he still blocking their way? Zijin screams his name. Bei Ming reminds him that he has never called his name like that in the past. Zijin insists on paying the debts for Coco and tells her to not be afraid. As long as she decides to go with him, he will definitely take her away. But Coco refuses to leave with him. She further adds there is no such relationship between them. Unfazed by his objections, Bei Ming carries her away while Zijin screams from behind, warning her how dangerous Bei Ming is and she might lose her time any time. Coco feels a little bit heartbroken and is confused. Why? Because if there had been hope, she wouldn't be this desperate now. Bei Ming notices Coco's expressions and asks her if she really likes him. He throws her on the bed and asks her if she thinks she is really qualified to like Zijin. He reminds her that Zijin is the second master of the Mu family and the grandson of the Nangong family. And if she's mistaken, if she thinks that he will take over the Mu group in the future, Tears fall from Coco's eyes. But this makes him matter. He asks her if she's crying for him. And what does she think she is? He forcefully rips the blanket away from Coco. In the morning, Fafani arrives and sets Coco free, her hands tied with the bed. Coco tells herself to not cry, as crying is only for the weak, while Fafan thinks that the one who doesn't want it was badly tortured, while the one who desires for it always fails to get it, and wonders who is more pathetic. Coco realizes Bei Ming is ruthless to both Feifen and her, knowing that she likes him. He deliberately asked her to serve her, and it's a pity that this woman is stubborn. Dai Dai brought Coco's stuff from Nangong's house. She tells her to take it and get out and never come back. She is furious as she has found out Bei Ming instructed Feifen to serve Coco. Coco ignores her and turns back to leave, but Dai Dai pushes, causing her to fall on the floor. She also inquires from Faifan why she is so kind to her, reminding her if it hadn't been her, Bei Ming would not act like this. Faifan clarifies to her that whether she's there or not, Bei Ming will never want her. Coco gets up and gently pushes Faifan and runs away. While the realization hits Faifan that even without Coco, the outcome would have been the same, 
Bei Ming would have never fallen for her. On her way, Coco thinks to herself that she really doesn't want to do anything with these people. And why does she have to suffer every single time he gets angry? As she gazes upwards, she finds Zijin standing before her, and she contemplates whether he has been waiting for her throughout the entire night. He tells her that his offer from yesterday still works. As long as she wants, he will take her away. She asks him if he likes her knowing what Baiming and she did last night. He finally opens up that he had no idea before, but after last night he decided to like her. He misunderstood her before and forced her to leave him because he was afraid that he would be captivated by her and that she would become his Achilles heel. He never expected that she would rather die than accept Bei Ming's terms. He then tells her that he decided to pretend to chase her, as Ye Bai Ming hates others' betrayal the most. He thought as long as she falls in love with him, he would definitely give her up. But he was wrong. It made Bei Ming care more about her. He admits that he has hurt her in the past, but now he has fallen for her. She recalls his confession that he said he decided to like her and wonders if there's such an ambiguous emotion in the world. He finally reveals that he used to be impotent and couldn't take any interest in any woman. This causes her to flinch from shock. He lets her know that when he was nine, he saw his mother being harassed by several men, and later she unalived herself because of that. She consoles him and thinks to herself that she thought she was the unluckiest person, but it turns out that there are some people more unfortunate than her in the world, as he was only nine years old. He then explains to her that he decided to like her now because of the event yesterday in the backyard of the Nangong house. She realizes the last night they had almost kissed and he got excited. She wonders if it was because of her. He then expresses that he wouldn't be interested in any other woman except for her, and reveals Bai Ming went to Dongfang International and would not be back for at least half a month, so she has time to consider carefully if she wants to give him a chance. He further adds that he can pay back the two million for her even if she is not his girlfriend, and she can pay it back to him later, when she has the money, and informs her that he's going to return to Mu to work. Concern apparent on her face as she remembers him that he has been very resistant to returning to Mu Group. He tells her that he is doing it for her. He cannot always live in the past. He hates them, but they're still his family. But then he changes the topic and tells her that he can drop her off to school. But Coco worries that if she returns like this, Xiang Xiang will definitely discover something. Zijin realizes she doesn't want to return now and brings her over to his apartment. Coco is surprised that Zijin lives in such a small apartment with one bedroom and one living room. She's afraid that he would have never imagined he's going to accommodate a guest there. He hands over a key to her and assures her that if she is scared, she can lock the door and he will sleep in the living room tonight. She acknowledges in her mind that he's really good, but too good to be hers. Next day after school, Xiang Xiang sees Coco leaving with Zijin and feels she has been hiding from her these days. In the car, Zijin offers to have a meal with him because she would be tired after the exam. At the restaurant, Coco assures him that he doesn't have to come to such places for her, but he remembers that she doesn't like to go to high-end restaurants. He then points out that she has been losing weight in the past few days and offers her to live with him in the Moo house. She tells him to not joke around, but he holds her hand emphasizing that he's serious and asks her to get married with him. He tells her that he has already made up his mind and he will give her two days to think about it. She can give him an answer when she finishes her exam. That's when Chen emerges and inquires if he's misunderstood the situation, questioning whether they are genuinely in love. Following this, he cautions Zijin about Bei Ming and asks if he is not afraid of him. Coco abruptly rises from her chair, expressing that she's full and will wait outside. She's filled with fear, worrying about the possibility that Chen might disclose everything to Bei Ming. Zijin gets angry and asks him why he scared her. Chen asks if he has lost his mind, how dare he touch Ye Bei Ming's woman. He also informs him that Ye has been recently making appearances with other women and even brings them to the Empire House, and can't he comprehend he's doing it to hide Coco from Master's eyes and protect her? Zijin replies, that's more of a reason he cannot let her stay with him. Otherwise, both of them will get hurt. He asks her if he really fell for that girl but he reminds him that it is none of his business. Chen is genuinely worried as he asks him if he really has to make his life difficult, 
warning him that if Ye loses his mind, he will kill him. He simply responds he does not believe that. In the school, Coco wonders about Zi Jin and that he has been busy lately, but it's better if they cannot see each other. That's when Xiang Xiang comes. She promises her that she won't ask any questions from her, but she should stop running and hiding from her. Coco expresses that she is sorry to her and thankful simultaneously. She then informs her that a little girl, Snow, came to her. She said she was going back to Ling for the exam and wanted to say goodbye to her. That's when Li Nan Gong calls her and invites her over for dinner. This way, they can also discuss the script at their home. When she arrives at Nan Gong house, she recalls when they jumped off from the window. She then thinks that if he had not tortured her like that and they had met each other under different circumstances, in that case, maybe she would have been attracted to him. And now she believes he is really scary. Snow is overjoyed when she sees Coco and expresses that she has missed her a lot. She hugs her. Coco realizes that it was Snow who wanted her to come, and it had nothing to do with Lai Nangong. Snow then shows her the gifts she has brought for her. As she's changing into the dress Snow gave her, she thinks about Bai Ming and wonders what's wrong with her, as he has been on her mind the moment she stepped into the house. That's the moment Li Nangong suddenly opens the door and sees Coco. Coco starts to panic, and Lai Nangong tells her he'll go out at once. He rushes out from the door, and Snow teases her, saying she was seen by Lai Nangong while changing, so that means she needs to marry her brother. Coco asks her to not talk nonsense, and he hasn't seen anything. Snow continues to cheer up for both of them. Coco tells her if she talks nonsense again, she will go back and ignore her. Snow replies back to her that she is aware that she will not do it since she haven't talked about cooperation with brother Lai Nan Gong yet, and repeats that since she was seen by her brother, Coco needs to marry him and be her sister-in-law. Snow grabs her phone and decides to tell Baming about what just happened, and Coco panics and asks her to not do that. He picks up and questions if she is with Coco right now. Snow tells him that she's in her room and asks if he knows what just happened. She states she has good news for him. Coco tries her best to stop as she ponders that Lai Nangong really did not see anything at all and wonders that if Snow ends up telling it, he will misunderstand it. He questions what good news. As Coco hears his voice and wonders why he sounds so tired, Snow tells him that Coco was changing clothes and her body was accidentally seen by Lai Nangong and questions him, what does he think about it? Should they get married? Snow questions if he is listening to her and tells him he must listen to her once he comes back. Suddenly his expressions are dark as if blood is boiling. He replies that Lai Nan Gong only likes her and no one else. He reminds her his promise that he will guard her all his life and would not get married. She replies back that it was just a joke as no one can stay single forever. Bei Aiming states that Lai Nan Gong always keeps his word and tells her that a kid should not get involved in adults' business. Further questioning her, how did her exam go? Coco wonders that sometimes Beaming can be so patient since he is so busy, yet he keeps talking to Snow. She wonders to herself that she has never seen such a gentle Beaming before, and remembers she did see once at the time when she was not afraid of him that much, and did not hate him as well. But now it is different. She's enjoying the view as she gets a call from Beaming. She picks it up and he questions how much was she seen by him. Just like Zijin said, she does not need to be afraid of Baming anymore. She tells him she was going to put her skirt on when he came and explains he did not see much, asking him to believe her before questioning herself that why does she need to explain herself to him? Nothing to herself that she is really slavish. He inquires again about her living arrangements in Zijin's house, and she patiently reiterates that they had separate rooms. She explains that she couldn't go to school that night because she feared being seen by Xiang Xiao. When he presses her about the next day, she proposes returning all the money and questions if he would consider canceling their agreement. He responds by suggesting that Zijin Mu cannot bring her happiness, but she insists he can, given that he has already recovered. He ends the call, pondering their situation as two naive individuals and questioning the way forward. She reflects on her earlier conversation with Bei Ming, realizing that her words to him were strategic. She then recalls Snow requesting her brother Lai Nangong to accept the movie. While they are in Zi Jin's car, he notices she seems worried and questions what's on her mind. She flinches, and he asks if she's afraid he'll do something to her. She reassures him that she's not afraid, and he instructs her to look ahead.
To her astonishment, they are driving along a scenic coastal road, and she's captivated by its beauty. Zijin then unfastens his seatbelt and remarks on the beauty of the view. She agrees, saying it's lovely. But she becomes startled as Zijin leans closer to her, asking if the view is more beautiful than he is. She turns to look at him in surprise, realizing how near he is, and he plants another gentle kiss on her cheek. But he grabs her wrist and pulls her towards his lap. He whispers in her ear that she had said she will give her answer tonight. She questions what does he mean. He questions if she will marry her. He presses the seat button, and the seat goes down. He tells her if she have not think about it before, she can think about it now. She asks him to not be like this. She firmly tells him that she won't be his girlfriend and pleads with him to let her go. She explains that she's not yet 20 and just a student, but he insists those are not the real answers. He questions if his politeness has kept her from developing feelings for him, suggesting that she wishes he would push boundaries. She denies this, saying it's not the case. He presses further, asking if her reluctance is because she loves Bei Ming. She denies that as well. He emphasizes that he's different from her, capable of either accepting or rejecting her, with the latter choice being more serious than a child's game. He gently touches her face, asking if she can be his girlfriend and promising her love and everything she desires, but she firmly declines. He steps back, inquiring if he's so repulsive that she can't even be his girlfriend. She admits he's a good person and that she's the one in the wrong for not recognizing how much he wants to be with her. She attempts to push him away, suggesting that he has already moved on. Returning to the passenger seat, she tells him that even if there's another girl besides her, he'll still have passion for that girl. She contemplates trying something else to show him she's not the only one he's interested in. She exits his car and starts walking. Suddenly, a group of men approaches her, asking where she's headed and if she needs assistance. She tries to flee, but one of the men seizes her and questions her haste, despite their brief acquaintance. Zijin intervenes, throwing a punch to rescue her. He grabs her and starts running, instructing her to get into the car and lock the door while he deals with the men. Panicked and contemplating how to protect Zijin from harm, she attempts to open the car door quickly, but halts as someone whispers from behind suggesting she might want his men and brandishing a knife dangerously close to her neck. If you enjoyed the video, we would truly appreciate it if you could take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Your support through subscriptions allows us to create more engaging and exciting content just like this. Please don't hesitate to share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. If there's a specific manhwa you'd like us to recap or dive into, we'd love to hear your recommendations. And don't forget to hit the notification bell icon to stay updated with all our latest releases and stay connected with us for more fantastic content in the future.